Hey friends, welcome back to the shop. So it's just not cars and trucks that we work on at the shop. Now it's boats. So I actually picked up this boat from my dad in a trade. Thanks dad, I love you. And before bringing it home, we were trying to get the motor started at his house and we just couldn't get it running the way that it's supposed to run. It would start up and then it would immediately die. So knowing the history of this, that the past couple of years, my dad really has not used it. The lake that he fishes at has a horsepower limit, so he could only use his trolley motor when he went out. Now this is a Mercury 40, and with the age of the boat and the motor already, each time the primer bulb was used, it was already degraded inside. So it was sending pieces of rubber in, which likely impacted the overall fuel system and its ability to be able to run the way it's supposed to. I wasn't aware of it that much at that point. So when I got it back to the house, I went ahead and did some simple maintenance on it since it hadn't been performed in a while, changed the oil, changed the gear oil, changed the filter, changed the, um, the fuel filters, changed the thermostat, all simple, basic 101 on the maintenance, hoping that one of those things would actually fix it. My luck, of course not. So I had reached my level of experience with outboards up to this point. And since I couldn't find anything online to give me a direction of where to go next, I decided to take it to a local marina and have their techs diagnose it. It wasn't cheap. I think it was roughly around $200 for a diagnosis fee. But what they did discover was one, the fuel line was bad and two, the VST was bad. The rest of the fuel system was working just fine. Now I had no idea what a VST was at that point and they quoted me a repair bill of $1,200. The VST new alone is an $800 piece and it is this piece right here. Now the VST on Mercury outboards on older mercury outboards it's vst on the newer ones it's now called fsm so vst is a vapor separation tank and what it does it basically is in line with the fuel so as fuel comes in there is a high pressure pump as well as a floater bulb inside of this tank now as fuel comes in the floating bulb will rise once it hits the top, it cuts off on the intake end, but then the high pressure pump kicks in, pressurizes the fuel, and sends it out to the fuel rails. With it being bad, I had two options. I could either buy a rebuild kit, just internal parts, which would have been relatively cheap. However, the guys at the marina were great because they told me that the difficult part is once you have it apart and you got it all back together, finding the seals for these is going to be extremely difficult and could be pricey. And because of the timing of it, I might as well just spend the money on a new VST. Well, I did a little bit of research, one, to see if it was something that I could actually do myself, and two, to see if there was a cheaper option. I found one used on eBay that had all, only been in fresh water and then it came with a 90 day warranty and it was only $400. So no brainer right there. So I went ahead and picked it up and also picked up a new fuel line and primer bulb from Amazon. So I'll post up the company that I bought the VST from on eBay in the description as well as posting the link for the fuel line and primer bulb, which was less than 50 bucks on Amazon. So really, really easy fix. Now, in order to be able to get this out, we have to remove the lower shells. And it's as simple as just a few bolts. 
Okay, so the bolts that you end up having to take off in order to get the outer shell is going to be this one here, this one here. There is another one right there. There is one here that you have to get out, one here, and then inside you have another one right there if the camera will focus on it there we go all right we have one right here and then in the same place in the front you have one right there these two you don't have to take out completely in the front and the back you could just Remove it enough to where you can pull apart the casing half. Once we have that free, then we'll have access to the bottom bolt on the VST itself, and we can start taking it out. So I'll go ahead and get this done, and then I'll come back to walk through the particular components of the VST that we have to separate and remove. Now the parts that we're going to have to disconnect or completely remove off of the VST is going to be this line here, this electrical connection, you've got this line, this line. This black box we'll have to take off completely once we have the older VST removed because that gets bolted onto the replacement. This line will have to come off and then there are eight millimeter bolts on three different locations that we'll have to get to. So we'll go ahead, get to work on this, and hopefully not have any issues with taking it off. Okay, now we have the old VST off, so now it's time to start replacing the interchangeable parts.
Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and put everything back in. All right, so the only thing that I'm gonna do now is clean up a lot of the fuel that dripped down the motor. Uh, once I have that cleaned up, then I'm gonna go ahead and prime it and see if we can get this fired up. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, so the only things that I have left to do now is just bolt up the shell, make sure that everything is snug there. I'm going to take this over to the house, hook it up to the hose, run it some more run it through forward reverse make sure the idle is where it's supposed to be and then we're done it's a successful project so i'm really happy with it if you landed here because you're getting ready to replace a vst on your mercury outboard and this helps you out be sure to drop a like leave a comment love to hear what you're actually working on and hopefully this will help you get back out on the water in a timely fashion thanks once again everybody for coming by the shop look forward to seeing you again soon Take care, stay safe.